Good morning, I'm Russell Delk and I serve in the Agape Kids Department. We're so glad you've joined us today. Before we get started, pull out your phone, shoot a text message to someone, share the link to this video, start a watch party, or call someone and invite them to church. Maybe you can connect and, and talk to them after the service. I know this, if you'll participate and fully engage in this service, I'm talking about standing up, get off the couch, remove distractions, raise your hands in the air, God's presence is going to be there and is going to show up right where you are. Even if you're by yourself, God is there. The Bible says, where two or three or more are gathered in my presence, I'm in the midst of them, even if you are by yourself. So remember, you are not alone. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit, and God's Spirit dwells inside of you. So look, don't sit back, okay? I want you to get in. Let's get engaged because this is a participation sport. Worship is all about participating. So come on, sing with your whole heart. Lift your hands up high and give Him the praise that He is worthy of receiving because our God is good. Down deep 
deep in my soul Down deep in my soul There's beauty in my brokenness And I've got true love instead of pain And there's freedom though you captured So 
shadow where I have the ransom for
Hey everyone, welcome to Agape Church. We are so glad you're joining us today. There are a few things we want you to know about. As we are currently physically distanced, it's so important uh, to stay relationally and spiritually connected. We are designed to be in community and at Agape, we love to build on relationships through our small groups. Our groups have been connecting online and it's not too late for you to join a small group. The church has been focused on actively responding to all that is happening around us. This past week, we partnered with Global Empowerment Mission to help disaster response teams in our areas distribute food and supplies to those most affected by the tornadoes on Easter Sunday. We were also able to use our city center location as a C Spire Cares Wi-Fi parking location in an effort to provide complimentary Wi-Fi to the downtown area for the safety of your vehicles. We are so amazed by the ways our serve team members are partnering with local organizations and ministries to make a difference at this time so people can continue to receive the help that they need. Thank you for your generosity and heart to serve others. This has enabled us to be the hands and feet of Jesus. We also want you to know that we will have First Sunday Prayer and Communion live at 6 p.m. this Sunday. Join us on Facebook Live or on our YouTube channel to worship, pray for the needs of our community during this pandemic, and come to the Lord's table together. Hey everybody, it's that time where we worship God through our giving. Listen, I wanna thank you so much for your faithfulness and your generosity over the last several weeks. These have truly been trying times, but it has been so amazing to watch how everyone has chosen to worship God and still be consistent and generous with their giving, worshiping God and continue to put Him first in the midst of very challenging times. I want to remind you that when you give, you're not only going to support the ministry and the facilities here at Agape, but you're helping our missionaries all over the world who right now really need our support. You're also helping our local efforts as we continue to help with the uh, relief efforts with the tornado and other things that come up through the community. You are helping to be a part of that. Your generosity goes further than you know. So again, thank you for your generosity. Thank you for continuing to be generous and obedient and putting God first. And we want you to know as well, as the leadership of this church, we are continuing to put God first as well in our giving. Together, we're continuing to see God's faithfulness. The Bible says, never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. God bless you and thank you so much for being faithful and generous. We like to make giving easy at Agape. You can text Agape Next and the amount to 77977. You can go to our website, theagape.church forward slash give, or you can mail your check or gift to Agape Church, P.O. Box 4242, Laurel, Mississippi 39441. And finally, we'd love to pray for you and any needs that you may have at the Next Steps tab at theagape.church. Just click Request Prayer. We will continue to pray over every request throughout the week. Hey everybody, thank you for joining us today. We are in week number three of this message series called After Life. It's kind of a play on the word. As we know, after life, or commonly referred to as life after death, is the belief that um, a person's identity continues after the death of their physical body. In this series, After Life, we're looking at the events that Jesus had after his resurrection on this earth and how those events reflect and show us what our life should look like. What do we look like? What does our life, believing that the essential part of our identity comes alive because of his afterlife experience, 
what does that look like for us? What does what should our lives look like? In other words, after Jesus rose from the dead, he established a brand new normal. And here we are in these times right now where we are experiencing the establishment of a brand new normal. No one really knows what comes or what's going to happen, but we all have got to understand that the old normal is not going to exist anymore and we are in the process of establishing what a new normal looks like. We're diving in in this series to really look at what that looks like for us as believers in light of the finished work of Jesus on, on the cross. So let's start tonight, uh, today, let, let's start in Acts chapter 1, and I'm going to start at verse number 4. And today I want to talk about a Spirit-led life, a Holy Spirit-led life. Acts chapter 1, starting at verse 4. On one occasion, while he, Jesus, was eating with them, he gave them this command, Do not leave Jerusalem. But wait until the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about, for John the Baptist with w baptized with for John baptized with water, but in a few days you'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Jesus is here referring to what he spoke about actually in John chapter 14. If you got your Bibles, turn there with me. We're gonna be using the word a little bit today for this message because I want to lay a good foundation for what a spirit-led life is and what that looks like, why that's important for our afterlife. Let's go now to John then chapter 14, starting at verse 15. Jesus is talking here. If you love me, you will obey what I command and I will ask the father and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever. Somebody say forever. The Holy Spirit of truth, the world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. And I think that's such a huge statement right there in the scriptures that Jesus is telling them right there, which they don't understand that he is not going to physically be on this earth the whole time that they are. But in this amazing statement where he's laying out for them that there's going to be a new normal. And this new normal means that there's going to be a comforter, a counselor, the Holy Spirit that Jesus himself was going to pray for to be with you. And he says, and he will be in you. Jesus is describing this new normal. And I love where now they kind of it's almost like you can sense that he senses that they they get he's not going to be here forever. And he gives like this incredibly compassionate statement to them. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Man, what an incredible statement. I will not leave you as orphans. I won't leave you fatherless. I will not leave you motherless. I will not leave you without a covering, without parental blessing. I'm not going to leave you that way. He's made provision for us. Oh man, I think that's just such an amazing thing. Let's, let's keep going. I will come to you before long. The world will not see me anymore, but you will see me because I live. You also will live. And on that day, you will realize that I am in my father. You are in me and I am in you. Hey, these are some powerful things that are happening here. Whoever has my commands and obeys them. He is the one who loves me, who and he who loves me will be loved by my father and I too love them and show myself to him. Jumping down to then uh, verse number 25. All this I have spoken while still with you, but the counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the father will send in my name, will teach you all things, say all things, and will remind you of everything. Someone say everything that I have said to you, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you, I do not give to you as the world gives, do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. You've heard me say I'm going away and I'm coming back to you. If you love me, you would be glad that I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. 
I have told you now before it happens so that when it does happen, you will believe. I will not speak with you much longer for the prince of this world is coming. He has, he has no hold on me, but the world must learn that I love the father and that I do exactly what my father has commanded me. Really key here where Jesus has already told them And now we're seeing it in Acts where it is getting ready to happen, where he's getting ready to ascend to the Father. We jump down then to Acts chapter 1, jumping down to verse 7. He said to them, It it is not for you to know the times, the dates that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Scripture goes on to say after this, he was taken up before their very eyes and a cloud hid him from their sight. And they were looking intently up into the sky as he was going. And when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them, men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who was taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go to heaven. Today, then, I want to talk with you about a spirit-led life. That one of the keys, here's the last thing that happens that Jesus tells them, is to stay in place until the power of the Holy Spirit comes on until you are filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. And when we start talking about this, there's a lot that people do not understand about a spirit-filled and a spirit-led life. And honestly, the enemy has used a lot of this to bring division even within the capital C church. And so I want to be clear as we start to look, I want to talk about some of the the myths that are there, but really just talk about what this means for our new normal. I think every believer has to understand that being a a spirit-led follower of Jesus Christ is the normal. That has always been the normal, has been the plan as Jesus has laid it out, that as he would leave, his father would send another comforter to be with us and to live in us. The Holy Spirit is not a bird. The Holy Spirit is not like the force in in, in Star Wars. The Holy Spirit is a person and you can speak to and talk to the Holy Spirit. He's the third person of the Godhead and this is why Jesus uses the pronoun him referring to a person. And sometimes when we're thinking about the Holy Spirit, we, we can almost feel like it's, it's a force. The Holy Spirit is a person just like Jesus is and just different form and you can talk to him. And here's the part we start looking at being where he says, stay there until the Holy Spirit comes when you're baptized with the Holy Spirit. Baptism, full immersion, that there's a spirit filled and spirit led experience where our lives should be fully immersed, where we should be led by the Holy Spirit and the new normal for our lives, a new normal for this new world that we're living in, so to speak. Believers have got to be spirit filled and spirit led. And when we start talking about that, some people have like this just different ideas and and they think about, well, you know, what does it mean to be spirit filled? And uh, does that mean that like, hey, we, 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 we speak in tongues and like you're, and you, if you don't, then you're not spirit filled? Or uh, what, what does that mean, dude? And, and, and here's what I want to say. The number one evidence, I still believe the number one evidence of a spirit filled life is a changed life. You cannot tell me that you are a spirit filled follower of Jesus and yet your life is not changed. I'm sorry. It just does not work that way. A spirit-filled life is a changed life. Now, does God give? I really believe that. I've talked with very honestly about a, a prayer language. I believe that every believer can. I, I'm hoping that every believer desires to have a prayer language that comes from the Holy Spirit. But I'm telling you, that is a desire from a believer that has to desire that for their life. I believe that God wants to give that to you. But I also say I don't believe that's the only evidence of a spirit-filled life. The indisputable evidence of a spirit-filled life is a changed life. Now let's talk about it from here. What does that look like? Your everyday life, part of your everyday prayer life, should not just be about just praying 
to God in Jesus' name as we're instructed in Scripture. But you should also take time and ask the Holy Spirit to lead and guide your steps, to think through your mind, to speak through your lips. It's the very thing I do when I'm speaking as well. I ask the Holy Spirit, would you think through my mind, speak through my lips, because I know that he can help and he will speak exactly what people need. That there's a miracle that takes place every time that I'm able to speak. The miracle is not my ability. The miracle is that the Holy Spirit, Taylor makes it for every single person that has their heart open to hear what he would speak to them. I think that's amazing. He does it in my life to me. He does it in my life through me. And he'll do the same thing through you. When we look at this life, Jesus told them to stay put until they were baptized with the Holy Spirit. That This is how important that it is that he told them about it earlier. And now here are these days are where he's saying, I'm going to leave, but I'm sending another comforter. My, I've prayed and asked my father to send another comforter to you. When we start looking at a spirit led life. It is really a life that's alive to God, that is, that is fully understanding that it is the power of God, that the Holy Spirit is the tangible power of God in our lives to live lives according to his word. If you've been struggling in an area in your life where you've just been wondering about how do I, how do I help, how do I overcome, how do I live and walk this out, it really is the power of the Holy Spirit that helps us live life according to God's word. It helps us to live life in a way that shows Jesus that we love him. He says, if you love me, keep my commandments. This is going again to this this very first series that we talked about at the beginning of the year. Shema, hear, listen, and obey. And you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your strength. And when we dove into what love looked like, it was also that we showed love for God by obeying his word, but also how we treated other people. It's the Holy Spirit that gives us the power to live this life according to God's word. I'm telling you, a believer has to live a spirit-filled and spirit-led life. And with that then comes to the reality that we are not to live a natural life. We are to live a super natural life. Our life should not be normal. Normal doesn't work. Normal doesn't heal bodies. Normal doesn't help people with troubled minds. Normal does not work. We are to be weird and unusual by the the working of the Holy Spirit in our life. There should be a part of us that absolutely always draws God into every single situation that we face that we have a hope that is bigger than what our hands, our minds can produce. We have a hope because we have access to the absolute power of the Holy Spirit in our life, the power of God in the Holy Spirit. Scripture says this, the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead quickens, makes alive our physical bodies. Genesis 1.1 says the earth was void and dark and, and darkness covered the surface of the deep. But the Holy Spirit hovered over the surface. Listen, at the very beginning, when God said, let there be light, he spoke and it was the spirit of God that made that happen. This is the power. This is the life, the dynamous power that we have access to by a spirit led life. And what I love about agape is that we come from so many different spiritual backgrounds And we have made a decision that we're not going to major on the minors. We are not going to to allow little small issues split us and divide us. And one of the things that we also agreed upon is that we were, no matter where we came or how we came to this fellowship together, that we decided, number one, that the word of God is, that the Bible is the indisputable word of God, that Jesus is the son of God that you must be born again, and that it is possible for a believer to live a spirit-filled and spirit-led life. And so what makes the difference for us? What helps us in this? How do we have hope in the midst of hopeless days? It is by the power of the Holy Spirit that you should be asking the Holy Spirit to lead and guide you and guide your experiences even right now. That if it's something that maybe through your whole Christian life you've been dormant to, I'm encouraging you to to come alive 
to the third person of the Godhead of the Trinity and begin to have a relationship and build a relationship with the Holy Spirit that the afterlife, the resurrected life of Jesus, that he made it clear he was sending us the Holy Spirit to be with us and to be in us. And a believer to live the life of fullness that Jesus has designed has to have an awareness, a relationship with the Holy Spirit in their life. Now, here's where I want you to go today. As we begin, as we end this series, actually, here's what I'm going to ask. I don't want to argue with anyone. I don't want to argue about what the Holy Spirit is or isn't or looks like or even what you've been taught or what you feel like your theology is. But here's what we want. If nothing else, what we have come to in these days, we know we need to understand what this word says. And here's what I'm just going to ask. Here's where I'm going to actually end. Is I'm going to ask the Lord to show himself to you and to me like never before. I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit to just show himself mighty and strong in our lives. And I'm asking you simply to just be open to asking God the question, Lord, if there's more, I want it. Uh, a friend of mine, actually, Russell Delk, one of our, he's on our, one of our board members and a friend, he sent me a, a clip today uh, from Mark Batterson. He's an he's a, he's a author that we both like to read and probably both get inspired by. And Mark Batterson today, just in, in his, uh, his video message, um, he said, my prayer today is, God, surprise me. And he talked about the journey of how their church, like it looked like there were setbacks and how the Lord surprised him. But the surprise was the setback happened, but yet it opened up a whole other door. Like it led them to places that were key in their walk, key in their, their destiny as a church. It led them through what seemed like disappointments. The Lord was surprising them and opening other doors. I'm asking you today is to pray that very thing. Lord, surprise me. Lord, I'm open. Lord, if there's more that I've not seen in my walk with you, then show it to me by the power of your Holy Spirit. Lord, help me. Lord, I want to live the life that I keep seeing on the canvas of my heart, but it doesn't seem to be working itself out in the members of my body. Lord, by your Holy Spirit, help me to live this life according to the vision that I see in my heart that you've written on it through your word. Lord, help my thought life by your Holy Spirit. Lord, help my hands to do righteous things by the power of your Holy Spirit. Lord, help my feet to go right places places that you have for me to go by the work of your Holy Spirit. Lord, help my heart to not wander, but be set on you by the power of your Holy Spirit. And Lord, what you did for them in the book of Acts, Lord, would you do that in my life today? Today. In Jesus' name, amen. I believe that as you pray that, I believe you're going to begin to see God move in your life like maybe you've never seen before. And it's not because Pastor James is preaching a message. It's because the season is now that you have been maybe a sleeping giant in your faith. But this is a place where now there is a hurting world that is groaning for truth, groaning for the children of God to take their place, their rightful place in spiritual leadership that will result in absolute, a, a, something that we see an outpouring of God's spirit around the world like we've never seen. I'm telling you again, 
I'm praying for the taste in your mouth that you want to go back to normal, that the Lord would remove it and that he would consume you with his presence, with the fire of his presence, that you would desire his plan, his kingdom, his new normal more than you care about where we used to be. Don't crave the melons and the cucumbers from Egypt. Crave the milk and honey of the promised land that God is leading us to because he promises that he'll never leave us or forsake us. And I'm grateful for it. And I pray that we go there together. But I'm telling you that if we're going to live in the afterlife of the fullness of the resurrection and finished work of Jesus on the cross, we have got to be spirit-filled and spirit-led believers in every part of our life. Let's pray. If you're here today and I mean, you're listening today and you have not made a commitment first to receive Jesus as your personal Lord, I want to pray for you right now, right where you are. If you would simply pray with me, uh, Father God, I have done wrong. I have made mistakes and I'm asking for your forgiveness. Lord, you said in your word that if I would surrender my life to Jesus, that I'd be saved. Jesus. I surrender my life to you. Father God, I choose to believe that you raised him from the dead. And right now, according to your word, I am saved. I'm your child and I will never be the same again. And I give you thanks for it in Jesus name. Amen. Listen, if you prayed that today. Would you let us know um, if you're on the church online platform, there's a there's a button there that says I, I received Christ. Just click that one and and it'll let us know if you're watching one of the other platforms. I'm encouraging you. Would you email us at admin, A-D-M-I-N, at the agape dot church or simply if you want to, you can leave a comment right there in the comment section. Just say I received Christ and we'll respond. We want to. Uh, get you materials that will help you in your walk. Take your next step in your newfound decision. For those of you that already made that decision that are listening again, I'm encouraging you. Would you every single day this week, as you wake up before you start your day, would you one, just acknowledge the Holy Spirit in your life in the morning and then ask him, surprise me, lead me, guide me, think through my mind, speak through my lips, that I might walk in the fullness of what Jesus paid for in his afterlife. Man, I'm missing you all, but I know that he's got you in the palm of his hands and that he is faithful and that he's leading us to exactly where we need to be. God bless you. And I'll see you next week.